The Teaching Privacy Project aims to explain how online privacy works. On our website, teachingprivacy.org, you will find 10 principles for protecting your online privacy. Our second principle is, there is no anonymity on the internet. If you want to mail a letter, you need to write an address on the outside of the envelope so that the mail service knows where to deliver it. If you're expecting a response, you'll also need to provide your address. The internet is no different. When you want to visit a website, your computer sends a message with that website's address on it. That request will include a unique return address so that the content of that website finds its way back to your computer. Your computer's unique address is known as an IP address, and every computer connected to the internet has one, including devices like smartphones, tablets, and even internet-enabled devices like bathroom scales and thermostats. Every time you request content from the internet, websites collect your IP address. When you visit a website, such as your favorite blog, you may see advertisements. These advertisements are images that are usually loaded from separate websites not owned by the blog you are visiting. Similarly, this blog may also feature widgets from social networking websites so that you can easily share posts. These widgets are also loaded from separate websites. This is known as third-party content. When all of this third-party content is loaded, each of these content providers receives your IP address as well, regardless of whether or not you interact with their content. Imagine a social networking website that has sharing widgets on multiple websites that you frequent. This social networking website now knows that you visit each of these websites and can use that information to learn more about you. For instance, if they observe your IP address load one of their widgets on a video game review blog, followed by the same IP address, loading another one of their widgets on the Smallville Picayune website, they are likely to assume that you like video games and live in Smallville. Now imagine if you create an account on the social networking website. The moment that you enter your name or other information, they can now use your IP address to observe that you are the same person as the one who they observed visiting the video game blog and the Smallville Picayune and now they can associate that information with your name and whatever other information you've entered into the social networking website. They now know a lot more about you than you may have realized. One way of preventing a website from knowing your IP address is by using a proxy server. Your computer contacts the proxy server and asks it to visit a website on your behalf and then to send the content back to you. This is akin to writing a letter to someone, but then placing that envelope inside another envelope addressed to a friend, with instructions to the friend to mail the enclosed letter, and then forward any responses back to you. When many people use the same proxy server, lots of individuals appear to be coming from the same IP address. Remember, anonymity loves company. However, one concern is that the proxy server still knows what you do and who you are. You can prevent intermediaries from knowing who you are by using Tor. Tor is an anonymous proxy that sends your internet traffic through multiple proxies. Each intermediary only knows the immediate next step and immediate previous step. No one except you will ever be able to know both the sender and destination. Cookies are another way of identifying web users. Not that kind of cookie. A cookie is a piece of information that a website sends to your web browser to save for later. When you visit that website in the future, your web browser will automatically send back that cookie. For instance, when you log into a website, that website might set a cookie so that you can revisit that website without having to log in again, at least if you go back within a certain time period. Cookies can also be set by third-party content providers when you load their content from another website. What this means is that every time you visit another website, that also contains that third party's content, your web browser will automatically send back the cookies that that content provider previously sent you on other websites. If you then access a website using a different IP address, but with the same computer, for instance, because you take your laptop to a cafe, websites can use cookies to identify multiple IP addresses as being from your computer. What this means is that even if you use a proxy, websites might still be able to identify you through cookies. You can prevent this by clearing your cookies, which all web browsers allow you to do in their settings interfaces. 
you can also enable private browsing mode in your web browser, which will automatically clear the cookies each time you close it. But clearing cookies comes at a cost. You are trading convenience for privacy. Without cookies, you will no longer be able to stay logged into websites or have certain settings saved, for instance, location preferences. This is a personal choice that you will need to make for yourself. However, clearing cookies and using proxies still does not guarantee your online anonymity. Many websites employ fingerprinting techniques. Some websites may really want to know who their visitors are, and therefore will not want to rely solely on cookies, because they can be cleared. Therefore, they will collect additional information about your web browser and computer. For instance, in addition to providing websites with your IP address, your web browser may send information about your screen resolution, the fonts you have installed, the type of web browser that you use, the version of that web browser, whether it runs on a Mac or Windows, and even your time zone. This information is usually collected so that a web page can be rendered correctly based on your computer's features. However, this information can also be used by websites to construct a relatively unique fingerprint for you. When you return to that website, or visit another website that they control, or that shares data with them, they can calculate another fingerprint with this same information to see if you're the same person who previously visited them. In this manner, they can track you without needing to rely on cookies or IP addresses. Some companies may only perform tracking to determine your interests without identifying you by name. However, many companies will make additional money by selling this data to what are known as data aggregators. Data aggregators make money by collecting information on individuals from many different sources and then combining it to build individual profiles. For instance, a data aggregator may buy data from an advertising network and an online store. The advertising network may provide them with a list of websites that you have visited, as well as your IP address. This information may not identify you by name, but when it's combined with the online store's data, which also contains your IP address, your name, and the email address you use to sign up for the newsletter, the data aggregator now knows your name, contact information, and interests. This is all because they were able to connect the dots by matching the IP addresses from two different data sources. They will now make a profit by selling your profile to countless other companies. In fact, many pieces of information about you may seem innocuous by themselves because they do not uniquely identify you. For instance, you may not care about sharing your interests anonymously. However, combining multiple pieces of seemingly anonymous information about you can be used to personally identify you. One study showed that just knowing someone's birth date, zip code, and gender will uniquely identify them 87% of the time. In other words, all of your online activities could be used to paint a pretty clear picture of who you are. So while there are measures that you can take to stay more anonymous online, ultimately, there's no anonymity on the internet.